What size battery do you need for portable ham radio operations? What are some good but cheap batteries to use? And ham sticks, Wolf River coils, and HOAs. This time on Mailbag Monday. Thanks for tuning in to Ham Radio 2. My name is Mike K8MRD. If you have an amateur radio-related question for me, shoot me an email, k8mrd at icloud.com, and you just may have one of your questions featured on an episode of Mailbag Monday. Today, we have much to talk about. Firstly, though, Phil, KA4KOE, emailed me a great spreadsheet that he made up to help you calculate what size battery you might need for portable ham radio. I get that question all the time, and this is a cool tool to show you. So the the I will leave a link to the article where this can be downloaded in the description below. But this comes uh, from Thomas Witherspoon, K4SWL's QRP.com uh, blog. So let's head over there and take a look. And it's QRPer.com, excuse me. But here's the, here's the link, and we're going to scroll down here to where it says Battery Sizing Calculator. Click here to download this spreadsheet. Once you've downloaded, it looks like this. So this is a really cool spreadsheet that you can use. And Philip is way more qualified than I am. He's an engineer where I'm just a salesman. So <laughs> uh, this is neat. And he, I, clearly he spent some time doing the maths in this. So basically what we have, if we look at these three colored cells here, you enter data in the yellow cells. The blue cells are those automatically calculated, and the green cells are the calculated minimum battery sizes. And he has lead acid and uh, lithium ferrous phosphate, uh, more commonly known as lithium iron phosphate. So a couple things you do need to know. You need to know what your radio's uh, current draw is on receive. Don't go by manufacturer specifications. You need to hook your radio up. Just a little inline watt meter will work to give you a, a baseline. You need to know that. You also need to know what your actual measured current is. So again, with an inline watt meter, you can just key up 100 watts, CW or whatever, five watts if your QRP radio, whatever it is, key up what your max power is and take a measurement of that. So for example, I know that both my Yesu 891 and my ICOM 7300 both use just a solid one amp of current on receive. Uh, for FT8, I would probably say I get maybe 15 to 18 amps of current draw out of those radios. Let's just leave it at 15 for this case, but ah, screw it. Let's go to 16. Okay. And enter average transmit average power. This is really the average time you're transmitting, I think, is probably a better way to word it. But he's got some suggested averages here. 0.1 to 0.2 for SSB, 1 for FT8 or FM, and 0.5 for CW. So let's just keep it. I'm mostly a, a, a sideband guy when I'm doing parks on the air. So let's just leave it at 0.2. And right here, my calculated average ampere load is 3. Now down here under the anticipated receive, and this is something I just know out of experience because I do parks on the air all the time and I'm always monitoring my batteries, but here's where you can kind of say, okay, well, what kind of activation are you going to do? If you're like first time parks on the air guy, I'd probably leave it at this 0.9 and 0.1. So basically what this means is you're receiving 90% of the time and you're transmitting 1% of the time. Down here, we can see, okay, my receive amperes are going to be 0.9 hours equals 0.9, and you get amperes per hour. So, like, these are just calculations, okay? Transmit, we're going to get 3.2 amperes, but we're only transmitting 10% of the time, so we're going to use 0.32 amp hours per one hour, which gives our total amp hours drawn as 1.22 because we're mostly receiving, doing a little bit of transmitting. Now here we're going to put in our total hours of operation. Let's just say we're going to go for one hour. So really we would need, uh, looking down here, a 1.4 amp hour battery if it's lithium iron phosphate. Uh, lead acid, you typically get half of what the rated capacity is, so 2.4. But let's go a little bit more realistic. I have found with this calculator for kind of how I operate, about 0.4 receiving yeah, let's, let's change that. I'm sorry. 0.6 receiving and 0.4 transmitting. 
because I'm almost a 50-50, but you're not quite 50-50 when you're doing an activation. You're, you're listening for that whole pile up, and then you're throwing out your call. So not quite 50-50, but close. So 0.6 receive, 0.4 for transmit. So really for a one-hour parks on the air activation at 100 watts sideband, uh, you probably only use about two amp hours of capacity out of your battery. So that's, that's about right. In, in two hours... And, I mean, I can make 150, 200 contacts or, or more in two hours. And with my Big Geek battery box, I have the meter on there that, that accumulates the amp hours that I'm using. It's in, in that time with that many contacts, it's kind of right in this area. So, I mean, I've got a 30 amp hour battery in my box. So, it's going to depend. But now if we go to FT8, let's say uh, we're 0 0.5 and 0.5. And then FT8 here, we need to put that at one. Look what happens. For two hours of operation, now I need uh, like a 19, 20, call it a 20 amp hour battery. Uh, and that again is about right. I, when I sit on my front porch doing FT8, uh, I use 69% power because 69. And in when I'm watching like the Ham Radio Clubhouse uh, stream on Tuesdays, I'll be operating for most of those two hours, if not a little longer, and I'll use anywhere between about 12 and 15 amp hours of current, or capacity rather. Uh, but again, I'm only at 69% power, so for 100% power, yeah, about 19, 20 amp hours. So this is a really neat, cool, thanks Phil for sending this to me, thanks for making this, and uh, again, I will leave a link to this in the description so you can download this and uh, help figure out what the heck power you need. So thanks Phil uh, for sharing this with us, this is awesome. Next, we've got a question about batteries, one of my absolute favorite subjects next to antennas. This viewer is writing, hi, Mike. I've seen some YouTube reviews like best HTs in various price categories, and you've done some great battery reviews. Thank you. So I'd love to see a compilation of best batteries by price point. Well, I'd like to get a 100 amp hour or larger bioeno. That's just not in the credit cards. So what are the best options by size and price? So thanks for writing in. Uh, Given that he's talking about a 100 amp hour battery, I'm going to focus mostly on those. Um, I don't have a lot of experience with the larger size batteries in the lesser expensive realm. I've only got one, and it's this uh, from Batteria Power. They sent me this. This is a 100 amp hour battery. I think they sell this for 260 bucks. Uh, it's, it's a bit smaller in physical size. There's a 100 amp BMS in this. Some batteries that come to mind, because I watch a lot of battery videos, uh, Miati, Lee Time, Redodo, and Power Queen um, are, are some that just jump out at me. Don't take my word for it. I want to show you a few websites, and then we'll take a look at some batteries for you to do your own research and, and kind of make the decision for yourself. So first and foremost, if you only watch one YouTube channel about batteries and solar and everything, watch Will Prowse. He is the guy that I started watching. I'll throw OH8STN in there as well, but I really learned a lot from Will because he does solar setups, he does battery reviews, he tears them down, he looks at the guts, he tells you if it sucks, he tells you if it's good. Uh, so check out Will Prowse. Another great channel is Hobo Tech. I've been watching a lot of him lately. Here's one of those Lee Time batteries I was talking about. So he kind of does similar things uh, as Will Prowse. He's got a great channel, uh, you know. And, and these guys aren't gonna aren't gonna lie to you. Like, yeah, we all get a lot of free stuff, but there's a lot of honest reviews. Another great channel, my good friend Mister the Smoking Ape, does a lot of battery reviews. Here's one for a Grenner 100 amp hour LifePo 4 battery. Here's Redodo that we mentioned earlier. Uh, let's see, I know he's got a Power Queen in here somewhere. He's, he's got a few, um, and of course I can't find. Here's Vatra. I mean, here's here's Power Queen. They're I mean they're all they're all Chinese. Here's a Time USB uh, battery. So lots of channels you can watch. Now as far as prices, here is. Uh, that's the battery of power. They're selling it for 260. This is a different battery than what I have, but pretty darn inexpensive for a 100 amp hour battery. Now we go to Amazon. Miati is a battery that I've used for a while. And actually this is two 
of their 16 amp hour batteries that I put in parallel. And I use this. I just made a, uh, a battery box specifically for these batteries that I use just for my 12 volt uh, cooler that I use when we're doing field days and such. So Miati is a brand that's been around for a while. Uh, here's the 16 amp hour that I'm using. It's 60 bucks. They've got a 20 amp hour for $79. Here is, what is this, a 36 amp hour for 129, and then they've got a 100 amp hour for $279. You can also take a look at Lee Time. Here's their 100 amp hour for 279 bucks with a $20 coupon. Uh, I'll try to throw some links uh, for all these in the description as well. Uh, here's that 3000 watt Lee Time inverter that I have. This thing's awesome. Here's a 230 amp hour from Lee Time that's got uh, all the low temperature protection, 689 bucks, pretty inexpensive there. They've got some bigger ones too. Yeah, here's here's a pair of 200 amp hour battery. I think they make a 410 amp hour battery now too. Here's looking at Redodo, which the Smoke and Abe calls Redodio. Not sure where you get the EO part in there, but <sighs> Toroids. <laughs> Redodo 100 amp hour for 249. Save 20 bucks with that coupon. Here's a 200 amp hour for Redodo for 539 bucks. These have all been reviewed on all the channels that we mentioned before. Looking at Power Queen, 289 bucks for their 100 amp hour battery, 539 for their 200 amp hour. I mean, these could be all the same batteries, just in different packages. I don't know. There's probably a little bit of difference, but uh, there's plenty of them out there. So hopefully, with that list of channels, uh, that'll help you and. Uh, you can kind of make your own educated decision based off of that. But uh, thanks for writing in. I love talking batteries. I could sit here all day doing it. <laughs> and lastly, we've got a little bit of a multi-part question. This viewer says, uh, this question's about ham sticks and wondering, someone made a comment to me that ham sticks are good. However, for mobile use, 40 and 80 are not that good. Yeah, 80 especially is going to be really narrow bandwidth or a high Q, as we say. Uh, so if you want to change frequencies, you're probably going to have to get out of the car and adjust that whip uh, to the new frequency you want. 40 meters, I don't think you'll have quite a problem. A car actually makes a really good ground plane. 80s, 80s tough. I mean, you're taking a really, really, really long band and shortening it to like a six foot whip that's loaded. So that's going to be tough. So I got wondering, is it possible to use two ham sticks as a rotatable dipole? Yes, it is. Also, what about using two ham sticks in a co-phased layout on a mobile? The problem with that is with co-phasing, you need to be, I forget if it's a half a wave or a, a quarter wave apart, but they need to be way farther apart than uh, the distance that you're going to get on your car. So that's not really an option. Then he goes on to say, how about your wolf? Uh, how about wolf recoils in a rotatable dipole setup? They actually make something like that. And then he goes to say, actually, I'm trying to figure out a good way to get on 40 and 80 meters from my HOA. So that's that's the real question. But let's talk about um, rotatable dipoles really quick, because that's something you can do very easily uh, for pretty darn inexpensive. So just Googling hamstick dipole will lead you to a myriad of things. But this guy right here, this MFJ mini dipole mount is something that you can use. And I'm not I'm not necessarily saying get this, but there there's things like this that exist. So what this is, here's where your mast is going to go. So the way this works, this nut right here, one of your ham sticks is going to go in there. OK, here's your SO239 where you're going to plug your coax into. And then here is the other part of the dipole. So this would probably be the driven element. And then this would be the uh, the other half of the leg, if you will. So the other dipole, the other ham stick goes out this way. 30 bucks from DX Engineering. And that way you can have a rotatable dipole very, very easily. And you can change bands, change the ham sticks, whatever you want. And Bob's your uncle. Wolf River Coils makes something similar-ish uh, that is designed for the Wolf River Coils. And they call that their Otophone or Autophone. I'm not sure how you actually pronounce that. But if we embiggen this picture, here's here's what it looks like. So you get this bracket that you buy separately. And you'd, you'd probably want to do this a la carte because they're showing this with the Silver Bullet Minis. But basically, same concept. Here's your feed point. Here's the driven element. Here's the other side, the counterpoise, if you will, or just the other half of the dipole is really what it would be. But uh, that would do it. And you could actually just kind of piecemeal this out. Uh, you, if for 80 meters, you would probably want to look at just getting the Silver Bullet 1000 coil and then scrolling up 
get the get that 17 foot whip that 213 inch whip that's really going to help uh use less loading and more radiating element especially on 80 meters and then scrolling back down where the heck did it go this right here is the autophone or autophone base that you can clamp to your mast and then both of your uh, antennas set up there. So you will need two Wolf River Coils antennas, but that's one way from Wolf River Coils that you can do that. Now, as an experiment, because this intrigued me, and I don't have any like hamstick dipoles or autophones or anything like that, I was wondering, I'm not an 80, 80 meter guy, but I have a Wolf River Coils Silver Bullet 1000. So I went outside and I hooked up my Wolf River Coils Silver Bullet 1000. I used all kinds of radials. I was using the 333 foot radials and then also uh, three bunches of five, I think I made them two and a half meter radials. So lots of wire on the ground. And then I just took a, a piece of a length of wire that I had. It was probably 35 to 40 feet of wire. And I just used a 3 8 bolt to screw into the top of the Wolf River Coils and connect that wire. Ran it up with a mast. You could also just throw a rope over the tree and run the wire up that way. The idea is to have a longer radiating element for 80 and see if you'd get more bandwidth. If I, I didn't check performance because it's the middle of the day, but just see if you could get more bandwidth. And looking at this picture of the antenna analyzer, here's the SWR I got right at, I was aiming for 3,900 uh, megahertz, 3.9 megahertz, excuse me, and looks pretty darn good. And I'm not using that much loading coil either. That's kind of the benefit. So less loading, more radiating element in the air is going to be a good thing. So that alone could be a good kind of stealthy HOA thing. I then compared it to the 17-foot whip, or that's a little bit longer with Wolf River Coils. And uh, you can definitely tune on 80 meters. That's what it's designed for. Had, a, uh, had to use a little bit more loading. Now it's, the collar is kind of about halfway down. And as we look at the antenna analyzer, the bandwidth isn't quite as wide, even though we're using the exact same setup. The only difference was that we changed the length of the radiating element. So you could just start with a Wolf of Recoils Silver Bullet 1000, bunch of radials and some wire or the 17 foot whip. They're, they're fantastic antennas. They're, they're probably the least expensive for that style of antenna. Uh, just, you know, a loaded, adjustable, multi-band antenna. Uh, they're great quality. I That was, I mean, I've said it a million times. The Wolf River Coil Silver Bullet 1000 was the very first ham radio antenna I ever purchased for a reason. They work. They're great quality. They're great people. They're made right here in the USA. Got nothing but good things to say about Wolf River Coils, and I don't think you'll see anybody that does have anything bad to say about Wolf River Coils. So I don't know how much a dipole configuration is really going to help you. Uh, I would say a Wolf River Coils with a longer wire would definitely uh, work better than any hamstick configuration because they're like 99.9% .9 loading and then you get that little bit of whip. So I would give that a shot first and see what happens. But Thanks for writing in. I got to go outside and play with an antenna and learn something myself. So uh, hopefully that helps with your HOA and, and uh, good luck getting on 80 and 40 there. So uh, guys, if you have an amateur radio related question for me, shoot me an email, k8mrd at icloud.com. And you just may have one of your questions featured on this very show right here on Ham Radio 2. My name is Mike, K8MRD, 73 for now.